Let's give us a countdown, Kyle. Three, two, one. Wild times. <laughs> Woo! I, love count, I love how Kyle count, counted down like a robot. Very slowly. Three. Yeah, Kyle. Two. Kyle's part android. What? <laughs> All right, well, here we are. We're back. It is The Wild Times, episode number 95, and a wow. very, very special Wild Times podcast today, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. joining us all the way from Tennessee, Peter's lights just went out. Oh, there's, mean, a, there's an apocalypse in Los Angeles. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm done. Sorry, Mallory. We got to go. Bye. Um, all right. The lights are back. Okay. All right. Let's get back on track here. Episode number 95. Woo! This is the Wild Times podcast, the greatest podcast in the world. I am your host, Forrest Galante, the, what am I? Broologist. An idiot. Uh, thank oh, you. yeah. The broologist. The yeah. broologist. Joining me, as always, the wonderful Peter Tep, the professor, PhD in podcasting. How are you, Peter? I'm good. Uh, we've been here all day, all and day. I'm getting real sick and tired of your shenanigans. Really? No, just I kidding. Thought I'd been pretty pleasant. Oh, that was the saddest look I've ever seen well, on a I, man's face. I thought I'd face. been like a pretty good house guest. I've been no, like, very have. polite. I, I, Your dog's been a better house my, guest. My, but my dog's a lot. More guest. importantly, fuck me. Who yeah. else is here with us today? Kyle. Kyle <laughs> is here. Kyle's but, uh, in the studio in Peter's living room. That is our studio. He's running things, and we're doing something special today. Real special. The most special part is that Patrick's not here. That's the best part of my day. <laughs> best part. <laughs> um, but even more special than that. Joining us is the very special Miss Mallory. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> I'll Hi, take it. Hi, Mallory. How are you? Welcome. I'm good. Thank you guys for having me on. This is pretty awesome. I listen to your podcast when I work out. Nice. Really? Nice. Yeah, I'll get my, I'll get my daily dose of bro. <laughs> it must be very out. demotivating listening to us during a, during a workout, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. Just middle-aged men having a conversation. That's right. Sounds grim. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is All more right. inspiring, yes. All right, good. <laughs> so, Mallory, for those that don't know you, they should know you. Let, let's see. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. That's the way to start, right? Yeah. I met Mallory. No, let's start at the end. Yeah, start at the end, work backwards. <laughs> with a few flashbacks cut in. Yeah. 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 There we go. I, Mallory and I met like six, seven years ago, right? Yeah, we were babies. We were babies making big mistakes. <laughs> and Mallory and I met, and I, I, was, uh, I was just figuring out like the TV thing. I just started producing. I just started doing it. And I was trying to figure out like how to do more TV, and Mallory was killing it in the like creepy crawly space. And by the way, for those that don't know, if you're watching this podcast, that is Mallory's niche. She's, she's the queen of the creepy crawlies. And don't nice. let her very beautiful, like composed demeanor fool you. She <laughs> will touch the grossest, slimiest things, which is probably why she became friends with me. So yep. anyway, um, <laughs> Mallory, and yes. <laughs> Mallory and I met. Mallory and I met and we, yeah, first of all, before we go to the whole story, tell us how you became the queen of the creepy crawlies. Um, I think I just kind of fell into it. I didn't have any enough stuff when I was growing up and I was, when I was about 20, I was terrified of everything. And so I was like, you know what, we're just going to get over this. So I ended up just started going to the jungle, hanging out with anybody who was willing to let me hitchhike with them. And, and I started hanging out with you. I think Wait. actually Forrest, you were the first one to ever show me my first wild rattlesnake. I remember that. I was that was awesome. Mortified. But it was like my first. It was my. So first. you went. Sorry, go ahead. No, go please. So you, so you went from basically just being terrified of insects and whatnot, and then you're like, "Well, I'm just gonna go to the jungle and touch all these insects." Yeah, and why do can't all you do that? No, no, I'm third because I'm almost forty. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but so I mean, you yeah, know, it's funny how when we get older, how we start thinking about all that that. Shit, like you're like, oh man, that medical bill is gonna get super high if I try to yes. touch something I'm not supposed to. Or before, like, <laughs> totally, <laughs> I'll eat that. Yeah, um, so, basically, yeah, I grew up where no, no outdoors, no science, no wild stuff, and I wanted to get into conservation. And I noticed that that entails going into the field and dealing with stuff that I'm usually screaming, and so just started to hunker down and get it. Nice. And Mallory's got an awesome slogan, if you will, which is turning fear into fascination. Ooh, I like that. It is really good. And, and, and honestly, I think uh, how she figured out it's genius, but it's like, I think it's what everybody in our field, in the like wildlife presenter field actually strives to do. Sure. Is like turn fear into fascination because that's a thing. Like 
When you understand something, you begin to appreciate it. And when you appreciate it, you begin to care about it. Yeah. Right. And so that the breaking down that fear barrier is a big part of that. But anyway, so so yeah, Mallory and I met. I I just done what I just done like my first extinctor alive at that point, right? Yeah. 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 And, and um, so we we were hanging out. We went and caught rattlesnakes. And Mallory was telling me all about these like quite frankly disgusting things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They're cool. All you know, slime eels and like insects, like bombardier beetle, your favorite. Oh yeah. Yeah. All these cool things. And um, and we actually tried to pitch a TV show together, which was still really good. But we partnered with terrible people instead of partnering with Patrick. And well, you just like sort of messed that whole thing up. Yeah. But as you do when you're learning. Yep. And um, yep. and then Mallory up and moved to Tennessee. Right. And uh, and now like look at her freaking look at her look at her studio. Dude, I was saying uh, earlier when we got disconnected how great that background is. Thanks. This is, I always wanted my own research station, so I created it in my basement, basically. But nice. yeah, it's, I love it. Lots of skulls. Like, do you know what? Yeah. Will people be watching this on YouTube? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So this is one of my favorite. This is a replica. It's not real. Forrest, do you know what that is? It oh, looks, I don't know if you've been. But it looks like. Uh, uh, let me see. See the front teeth. of it. Oh, look at those teeth. That so gnarly? it's got to be it's got to be like a leopard seal. Is that is that close? <laughs> it's it is a seal. It's not a leopard seal. Leopard seals eat these babies. Ah, so it's a fur seal uh, called crab eating seal. But they're pretty crab unique because they actually eat plankton, not crabs. Oh like wow, that's whale. amazing. Why do they call them a crab eating seal? What's up with that? That's confusing. <laughs> I, I smell that's it. nature. So what? What's the purpose of those teeth on there? Why are they jagged in that crazy Christmas tree way? Yeah, it's kind of like a sieve. So they're going to take a big mouthful of seawater with krill and plankton in it, and they push their tongue, and it basically pushes the water out, like baleen in a baleen way. Oh wow, that's incredible, man! Pretty awesome. Evolution, nature, you crazy. <laughs> um, so Mallory, tell tell everybody that that's tuning in. Let's let's pretend this is the first time anybody's ever seen you. What like you've got a kid's angle, you're doing a podcast, you know, tell us more about this like fear to fascination. Give us some examples of the creepy crawlies and the the, the, the slimy is always stick out to me. She does this stuff with lamprey. I don't know. It just it's in my head. <laughs> Those are the ones that spit goo everywhere. Yeah, remember the car crash with the the like all the car was like stuck to the road. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah, the hagfish. That's what this is. Oh my God! Yeah, she's got one. She's got one on hand. Is that alive? No. No. Okay. It's in ethanol. <laughs> um. Yeah. So basically, uh, basically, I went traveled around and went to like narcissist snake dens. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. It's when like ten thousand garter snakes come up from their wintering dens, and you can actually see the ground pulsate. Is the craziest wow. pull, pull, thing. Pull up a picture while Mallory's talking about narcissist dens. It's N A R C I S S I S. Yes, narcissist snake dens. And, um, so that was kind of like my pinnacle. I was like, this is awesome. This is what I wish everyone could experience going from terrified to okay. wanting to like lay down and have all these garter snakes crawl all over you. But, um, once that kind of hit, yeah, that's, that's so all snakes, Peter. Did you just oh. say that you're, you wanted them to like, you wanted to be under that pile of snakes. That's, that's what you yeah, said. I mean, that that's like, that's like the pinnacle of uh, overcoming your fear, right? It's like yes. something that is so yes. terrifying now is like your dream to experience. It's That's like the crazy. Indiana Jones snake pit yeah. in real life. So you went and did Narcissus? Yeah. So I went to um, Narcissus um, up in Manitoba, Canada, and uh, we went to an area that was kind of, it was off site. So they asked you not to touch any of the snakes while you're in the reserve area and I didn't, you don't have to pick any of them up. So we didn't do any of that, but we just filmed them. But it's just to see like the ground just wriggle and writhe. And it was the coolest thing. But anyways, when I was like, okay, that is what I want kids to experience. Cause that's something I missed out when I was a kid. And so we started fear to fascination. And basically I go around, uh, there's a little girl, she was six. She called me up and, um, her mom did and said that, the boys were making fun of her saying that she's not supposed to like bugs or snakes or anything. So we went on a hike and was catching snakes and bugs. And so that's the kind of stuff I would like to do is get more girls and kids in general, just excited about nature. 
Yeah, that's something we talk about on the podcast quite a bit, you know. Well, Forrest talks about a lot. It's, it's really uh, about, you know, bringing wildlife to people who wouldn't necessarily otherwise be involved with it, you know, more than like a zoo or whatever, kind of what he does. It seems to be something that runs through a lot of the, the top kind of most passionate animal researchers and whatnot out there. And Mallory's a lot better than I am because I just go around and, you know, people sitting on their couches can watch it. Mallory used to like go, correct me if I'm wrong, Mallory, but you take like inner city and underprivileged kids and take them out into the field. I remember when you're doing that, was it around San Diego, right? You were Yeah, going, yeah, yeah. We were able to wow. take them out, take them to the desert, take them snorkeling. And I was terrified of the ocean growing up. I wouldn't go past my knees. And you see like Forrest doing paddle boarding with great whites. I'm still not He's at nuts. that level. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. if you come visit now, you know that we do that and you'd be okay with it. Yeah. Like Sean <laughs> <She's literally laughs> like, I'm like I don't like know. I, do I don't know. Stupid, yeah, that's a big <laughs> medical bill on my part. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got you got coverage. You're fine. You'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, sharks. sorry. It's the medical bills. Right. But keep telling us, keep telling us. Yeah. So, um, you, yeah. So you would take these inner city kids and one of the things you were always doing is breaking down these, these stigmas of like, I remember watching, I, I'm a, I, in fact, you know what? I'm going to give Kyle when this is done a video that Mallory and I made with this production company. We'll cut the production company out of the end and we're going to put it on the Patreon. So if you're watching wow. this on YouTube, come over to Patreon. You're going to get to see what an actual TV sizzle looks like. You see Mallory inner element. I'm talking cockroaches on her head, giant <laughs> spiders. Yes, this lovely lady right here with all these creepy crawlies. But anyway, she, I remember the reason I say all this is because well, part of it's in the sizzle. She used to take these kids. Imagine a kid from like the hood. Right. Right. Like yeah. never seen anything outside of like the concrete jungle. Mallory's picking this kid up, you know, here comes this, this girl, like this blonde bubbly girl in her like cockies, picks up this bus full of inner city kids, drives them out to the desert. And five minutes later, she's like plunking tarantulas on their foreheads. <laughs> I bet they love that. Let's make a disclaimer. I've never put a, a tarantula on anybody's head because that would definitely cause a lawsuit. But uh, <laughs> I'm exaggerating. <laughs> I've never done that. Maybe when, as long as parents aren't looking. But yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty fun. But isn't that kind of crazy? Just in our culture, especially how like taboo some animals are, which is why like we're gonna. I would like to like segue into like gross stuff. Um, how we can look at something or one concept, for instance, like eating bugs, which I know Forrest has probably done. Have you yeah. done that? Have both of you guys done that? Eating bugs? Have you tried bugs? Uh, no. One time somebody put a, a freeze-dried cricket in my drink and it was disgusting, but that's as close I've, as I've been to that. My, my kid, side note, Rhodes, absolutely chows freeze-dried crickets. Really? He loves them. Like my mom, like it's like her thing with him. She, I forget how it even happened. I think I had them in like in my office. Like somebody sent them to me as like a sampler and I'm like, I don't really want to eat these. And <laughs> right. I like opened them and my kid came by and just chowed like a whole bag of like ranch dressing flavored crickets. Yeah. Now he eats gallons of them. <laughs> um, but anyway, sorry, please continue Mallory. It's good. No, it's sustainable. That, that's a great point, right? It's um, practiced throughout the entire world, but in our culture, for some reason, it's very taboo. Like eating mm. insects is archaic, primitive. I like guess like the last thing you're going to want to eat. But then we sidestep just barely on like a biological level. And if you, but then you start looking at like marine arthropods, which are crabs and lobsters, and we're ready to eat them anytime. So I think right. it's like so fascinating how, I don't know, we can think something is disgusting when really we eat exactly the same thing. I've always had that, that thing too. It's like, I, and I've told this story before on the podcast, I worked on a farm where we sold sweet corn and it was fresh picked every day. And they had these ears of corn that had corn cancer it's and they the were black fungus, right? Yeah. The, it's uh, like a black fungus yeah. that all deformed in different colors and stuff. And my boss is like, you know, in some other Asian country, I believe no, no, it's uh, it's in like Peru. It's in, in South America. Right. So yeah. in Peru, it's a delicacy. Yeah. And here it's like disgusting. You know, disgusting. Like you're like ew. Like get it out. It's like slimy and weird, and the tassels all messed up. And then, um, and then of course you have all you've mentioned the whole thing about lobsters. They were fed to like convicts or yeah. something in Maine, and then they became a delicacy. It, you, not only were they fed to convicts, it became outlawed because it was yeah. considered cruel and unfair punishment to be feeding <laughs> inmates lobster. Right. Right. 
crazy. Do you guys like blue cheese by chance? I do. I, I don't like it by itself. Like I won't just like <laughs> chow a chunk of blue cheese on a cracker. That's too much. But in like a nice Waldorf salad. Yes, please. I mean, I like it, but only because I'm fat. I mean, I'll eat anything <laughs> that will satiate me. It doesn't really. I mean, you know, and, and it's cheese, right? I love cheese the most, but it's like Forrest said. I mean, if it's on like a cracker with some meat, yeah, but it's not like I'd stick a, you know, take a handful of it and take a bite out of it. <laughs> so the you know, blue cheese smells like feet, right? Yes. Have you ever wondered why it smells like feet? Well, I do now. Why? Yeah, now, now I do. <laughs> so the same bacteria that's on your feet that like makes your eyes tear up whenever oh, no. you take your boots off. That's the same bacteria they put in the fermentation process. Oh, come cheese. on. So next oh, time you're crazy, like lick your foot, and I think you might get the same. Ugh. Dude, I, I got to tell my wife this because she hates feet. And she's a neat freak, And too. she loves blue cheese. Yeah, Isn't that okay. crazy? It Parmesan is. cheese smells a lot like puke. Oh, it does. <laughs> you're ruining cheese for me. <laughs> Keep it up, Mallory. We're going to get Peter skinny eventually. Oh, yeah. This is, yeah. The, this is the Mallory diet. New segment. <laughs> yeah, listen um, to my podcast. I'll make you skinny. So tell us about your podcast. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what? There's so much to get into here. What should we do next? Should we talk about our podcast? Yeah. I want to. I want it's a perfect so segue. What I really it is, and we should do that. But I really want her to like show some of the things she does because it's sure. easy to sit here and talk about them. But uh, you know, what? let's talk about the podcast first. Tell us about your podcast, Mallory. <laughs> uh, so this the first podcast that we're making. I'll have the adult version later. But the first one's a uh, family friendly. It's eight minutes of ooh. It talks about the science behind gross things. So we talk about like mind altering parasites, cockroaches. Mm. Um, hagfish, which are the ones that like shoot the slime out. Um, that is what you were talking about earlier with the carload yeah. of slime everywhere. Yeah. Um, we talk about animals that eat poop and like where the <laughs> white sandy beaches come from. It's really parrotfish poop. Um, like, so all the cool science behind gross things, just so we can get more comfortable and learn that the animals that do the gross, disgusting stuff is just as important as the ones that, you know, we highlight on BBC and Nat Geo and all those kind of things. Yeah. And the podcast is eight minutes because it says eight minutes of view. Yeah, it's super you short. Listen? Sorry. What's that? No, I just wanted to like bash Peter for a minute. We have to do these things for like 90 minutes. Why couldn't we have done it for eight minutes, Peter? We could have uh, done 70 of them today. Because we enjoy each other's company for us. Clearly. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> uh, well, that's cool. All right, Mallory, give us, give the brosners, so our listeners, you, you know this, you listen to the podcast. Our listeners are called brosners. Um, give the Brosners some tantalizing. Let's get, let's, we, people are going to watch this. For those that are listening on a listening device, I don't know where we listen. I don't know how this podcast a listening works. listening device. <laughs> Come dude, over to guy. YouTube and watch what we're going to pull up. Mallory, give us something awesome to look at. Tell us something you want to share with us. Ooh. Um, I mean, the hagfish never disappoints. If you want to do a bunch of slime. Um, you, have, you, have a, you have a video oh, of... No. Can we do... Maggot debridement therapy. Is this a video? No, I want to see one of your videos that you've oh, made. No, that's what I'm talking boring. about. Boring. Google this stuff. Um, all right. <laughs> I don't have. Like, I don't know if I have anything on on YouTube or anything. All my stuff is super wholesome. I'm just getting like brave enough to die yeah. and show people the gross stuff. She's really short selling For, herself. Forrest, Listen, way, way to make our guest uncomfortable. You haven't seen her. You, she's full of shit. First of all, <laughs> I love Mallory. I could say this because I'm a close friend of hers. She's full of shit. Her, her. Look at her. Look at this. Is her Instagram? Look wow. at this. Did you film this? Oh, she's not sharing yet. But this, this is an incredible uh, insect that's squirting. Oh no! I just pulled that off of the internet. It's still fucking amazing. But that's what I'm talking about. Tell it. What? Yeah, um, I know that this is a velvet worm. I know, I, and I know that it's shooting out a sticky digestive enzyme. I know nothing else. Tell us about what we're seeing here. Uh, so yeah, so this is a velvet worm. Uh, it's just a defense mechanism, and you just said it right now. It's like it has its own built-in water gun, basically that shoots out like super sticky stuff, and then it jumps on the whatever they shoot, usually cricket, and then they are able to. I don't know. Do they? Do they stick a venom? I think they stick a venom in it and then it basically starts liquefying it and they'll start eating it from there. Yeah. I mean, I definitely see why, like, 
how somebody could really get into this. This is even just this video, like, nope, these are not monsters or aliens. These are just insects that are sh like that that are shot in high res, you know. What's another one, Kyle? Let's go back to Mallory's page. She's she's short selling herself. By the way, if you're watching this or listening, just go and look at Mallory's page. I don't know why she's pretending it's not full of really really cool stuff, but it is. Uh, this awesome. is salamander eggs, which are always cool. Do you know where the biodiversity hotspot for salamanders in the United States? I do, Peter. Do you? Of course, it's pretty not. awesome. <laughs> in the southeast, exactly where on, Mallory Peter, is. Oh, sorry, Mallory. Go ahead. I was going to say, Peter, give yourself more credit. I think you did. <laughs> the, the southeast, correct me if I'm wrong, Mallory, exactly where Mallory lives, is not only the, sal not only the United States biodiversity hotspot for salamanders with something like 68 species or something. It's the number one biodiversity hotspot for salamanders in the world. There are more species of salamander in the United Southeast than there are anywhere else on the planet. Now, what's a salamander? Is that an animal? Oh, come on. You're kidding at this point. Is it point. a bird? Are you serious or joking? I can't tell. Well, you can figure that out. All right. <laughs> She's serious. <laughs> Mallory, what's what, 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 Flatwoods? What, what should we look at? What's the best salamander that you're that you're you're working with? Hmm, that's hard. I mean, I always like the newt, you know, because it's so cool. Because you have the the juvenile that comes on land. That's an eft eft. It's red, and then it goes back into the water. Um, but there's just so many cool ones. Some that are like super tiny, about the size of you know maybe an inch that, and then you have some that eat others and they're about six inches. So there's some pretty unique ones depending right, on where Kyle, you want to go. There's some that climb trees. That's always cool. I'll, 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 let's do my favorite one. What what's your favorite? About? The mud puppy. The mud puppy. Mud oh, puppy. that's a good choice. Look at this thing. What a cool animal. Now the oh, hellbender yeah. always gets the credit. Everybody talks about hellbender. These, That's true. They're, they're much larger. They're, they're, they're awesome. I've caught them. I've worked with them with uh, both Mallory and I's mutual friend, Mike Knorr. Um, but uh, these guys are the prettier, more interesting version of the hellbender, if you ask me. Look at these things. I mean, they're just such cool-looking salamanders. They have like little flamenco dancer gills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what are these frills on the neck for? Gills. So it's pretty amazing. They're... Um, they don't, so most salamanders will have like a larval stage that's in the water and they have gills and then they move out of the water and they kind of turn into that very sleek looking salamander that we know. These ones don't, yeah. they stay, they look like their juvenile form all the way through their adulthood. So what you're seeing is the gills and then the red part that you see is kind of like gill attachments. It allows them to absorb more oxygen out of the water. Like, oh man, uh... they're so beautiful. Like a, a alveoli in the lungs, it filters out, you know how it filters out yeah, bacteria in the I, human lung kind of? I think so. I mean, I forgive yeah. me for not knowing my anatomy. I mean, they're filaments that attach onto, yeah, they create more surface area so they can absorb more okay. oxygen. Yeah. But yeah, imagine yeah. like, imagine if your lungs were just on your back. Right. And like if the, a <laughs> dust storm came up, you're just like, <laughs> yeah. like you're just fucked. Right. You're just fucked. Like your lungs are coated in dust. Like. You're walking around L.A., homeless guy just throws <laughs> something at you, you're dead. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, and it just shows you, like, how incredible these animals are. And they're still a very delicate animal, and especially uh, Mallory can talk on this further, I'm sure. There's a uh, chytrid fungus, which is affecting amphibians. So salamanders, newts, frogs are all amphibians. Yeah. There's this disease called chytrid fungus, which actually was probably created in a lab, by the way. And this isn't a conspiracy theory thing. Right. It's like an actual known thing. Yep. And it is wiping out a lot of these incredible amphibians. Um, where was the hub of Kittred? Do you remember? I think it was San Diego, yeah, wasn't it? I don't, I, I don't know, but did it start from the small quad, um, the African toads, the swimming ones that they used to use for pregnancy tests? Or is That's that correct. one of so, those? No, no, you're correct. So when I say it was created in a lab, you may remember, we used to, you made a joke about pregnant ladies peeing on frogs when yeah. I told this story. Right. But... Um, that we used to use African small clawed frogs, which uh, uh, you can bring a picture up, Kyle. Are these? They're actually really cool frogs, and they're all over. They're all over Southern California now, which they shouldn't be. They're invasive. Um, but these, they're they're where I'm from, which is uh, Southern Africa, Zimbabwe. Right. We had them native there, and they're these really cool frogs. They look like this. They're fully aquatic, and uh, what? How did it work, Mallory? I explained on the pod, but I've literally forgotten. It's probably the like five Moscow mules, but basically. <laughs> Uh, 
you could take, you could use them as a pregnancy test because if a woman was pregnant, some cell in them would do something. I can't remember. Do you remember? Uh, Mallory probably knows better. I don't. No, unfortunately, I don't. Oh, okay. um, but that's anyway, exactly. scientists were using these animals to create pregnancy tests. Right. And, um, and then uh, they got out of the labs, of course, and they had this fungus, this chytrid fungus, which is now spread rampantly all across the globe, wiping out amphibian populations by like 50%. So it's because the, of the pea tests? Yes. That, that this, this fungus... That's where the, the fungus was created in, I think, unsterile environments in labs where frogs are stacked like that. Wow. So, yeah. so doing some research basically into a product to, to be sold, they accidentally created this fungus now that is basically decimating this fucking population. Yeah, we're Humans, good at that. man. We're good Humans. at that. We, we just did like to destroy everything. Um, Mallory, uh, let me ask a question. So I just want to go back to when you first got into everything. You said you were about 20. When you were like, hey, I'm going to face this fear. Um, so what, like, did you, you seriously headed out to the jungle? Yeah, Which, on my uh, first international trip, I just had a camera that I didn't know how to use. And I fibbed and offered to do pictures and video for a nonprofit. <laughs> I've left nice. my heart. I mean, thankfully, they liked the pictures, but I definitely wasn't telling the truth. Where, where did you go uh, for that trip? Belize. Belize. Okay. And I got like the bad juju, like karma definitely bit me in the ass. I came home with six bot flies. Um, I remember which, that. I remember that. Remember yeah, you had them in your head? What? And what? you were asking me, Mallory was texting me. She's like, I got these lumps on my head. You, re you remember this, right? And you were texting me pictures. And, uh, and I was like, okay, take some vast. Do you know what a bot fly is? I No. That's okay, what I was going to ask. Kyle. So I was like, take some Vaseline. You remember this, Mallory? We were texting back and forth. And take a big chunk of Vaseline and put it on top of the lump. And uh, literally like an hour later, Mallory texts me back. She's like, ew, ew. you were so right. Wait. <laughs> it's Look. So it came out of your skin when you put the Vaseline on there? No. So unfortunately, it didn't. It was too small. They have this appendage right, that will stick out as their breathing tube. And it'll stick okay. out of the skin and you can try to pull it out. But if you accidentally pull the breathing tube and disconnect it from the bot fly larva, then, um, you know, you have this dead larva <laughs> rotting inside of you. So, Gross. <laughs> so, so you had six bot flies in, and they were in your like head and face. I had, um, three on my head, one on my chin and two on my shoulder. God, I so you had a Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Play I, was say, I was. Go. I remember I was on a plane and I was like, shit, this is like itching. And I like pulled it and I, I guess it was angry, but it popped out. And this guy who was sitting behind me was just freaking. Oh, oh my God. I'm the, oh. Um, by the way, I've never, I've never had one, which I don't understand how this is possible. Uh, oh, I don't know either. So see, see, oh. see, it's little breathing tube there. Yeah, and there's yeah. a couple different ways you can get them out. Either way, it's not good. Um, but you'll oh. see. I mean, it, it's yeah. Peter's not gonna enjoy this one bit. But yeah, I remember texting with Mallory, and we figured it out. And then you got you went and got them all medically extracted, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, How was that? <laughs> Kyle, was fast great forward time. to the, the 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 bug coming out of the guy's skin here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, um, you get tweezers inside you like slowly pull it out. Cause it has like these little hooks that will hold on to the inside of a little burrow it makes inside your skin. Oh. Yeah. And so like, it's like a very slow process and you can feel the hooks coming off. Oh my God. It's so much bigger than I thought. <laughs> and that's, that's what legit, she said. Not a big one. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that's fucking horrific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine Mallory no. coming back to Bel from Belize oh. with six, six of these that are. Oh my yeah, god! Oh my place. <laughs> I had one on my chin. Yeah, that was sexy. But <laughs> Kyle, can you make her big again? I have so many more questions about this experience. Um, well, not really, but so I, I do have more questions about how you got you. So you went over there and you you basically dived right in. What what did you kind of? do when you got there did you go there to overcome this fear that you were having i didn't know like, what i was doing i think like the hardest thing to go over your fear is just like uh, experience right so you yeah experience it and so i would just you'd walk and you every sound you hear you feel like something's gonna jump out and eat you yeah 
you just kind of curse at yourself the whole way and you're terrified. And then the next day it's <laughs> not as terrifying. And then the third day you're like, all right, it's kind of fun. And then yeah, you just keep going. I mean, but there's so many things in the jungle that can kill you. I, I Fuck mean, you up. And the like, scary yeah. is the majority of them are invisible. I, that's what I found out. That's like, the it's and, and that's what's, that's what's interesting about Mallory's line of work of being a, a communicator for these creepy crawlies is how many times on the podcast have I have people asked, well, you know, what's the animal you're the most scared of? What do I say yeah. every time? Uh, bot fly. No, I say mosquitoes. I but tell you all the time. I don't really listen no, to you. I really don't. <laughs> but I always I say every time I'm like, it's mosquitoes. It's parasites. Right, like right. Those are the things that get you. Um, so back to this Belize trip for a minute. So you're in Belize. You're taking photos. Everything's going well. You went central Belize, if I remember correctly. Right. right? You were like in the jungle. Yeah. You weren't on the coast. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I haven't been to the coast yet. I, every time I go, it's the jungle. And once you go to the jungle, it's, like it keeps drawing you back. I mean, it's like this <laughs> hypnotic seductress because there's always something else to find. And I mean, she gets you I, and I, she beats you up, too. I mean, I'm sure, Forrest, you've seen it. Or you've experienced it. I mean, the cuts and the bruises and the bites, the bug bites are insane. For some yeah. reason, you just want to keep going back. If this wasn't publicly available, I'd pull down my pants and show everybody my left butt cheek right now from what uh, what I have from these experiences. But um, <laughs> regardless, here's a little tip for the Brosners. Mallory, do you know how you got your bot flies? From a mosquito bite. Yep. So the, the bot fly will lay her eggs on the mosquito. And so when the mosquito bites you, it drops the egg into that wound. It's, it's horrific. And then, so how long does it take for this bot fly to grow to the size we just saw? Is that like a week or is that like a month? Uh, it's like a couple of weeks. It's like a couple, yeah, a couple of weeks, weeks to get to it, like that adult grub size. So you, but you feel it pretty much straight away. It's not like ew. it ever, it's not like you're like, oh, what's this thing popping up? You like get a mosquito bite. The other way you can get is from drying laundry. We can talk about that. But what? you get a mosquito bite. Yeah, serious. Yeah. You get a mosquito bite and you're like, wow, this is the worst mosquito bite I've ever had. It's really itchy. It's really large. It's not going away. And then like five days go by and you're like, wow, this is great. My mosquito bite's infected. and looks like a giant zit. Ugh. And then you're like, wait a minute. My mosquito bite's moving. Uh, <laughs> and you feel it. So like when you're sleeping, it doesn't like it when you're laying down flat and still start moving. Or if you're in a plane and the pressure changes. It gets them really oh angry too. So you start getting nightmares of like aliens eating your brain. This is th this is worse than fucking bed bugs. And I thought those were the worst. It's also why you world. won't do anything and it's leave correct. your house ever. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's a very just, nice. I'll house. wear off the yeah. repellent when I go. But uh, yeah, so the other way, so um, uh, we were talking about tips for the Brosners. You can absolutely get them from mosquito bites, obviously, as Mallory did. And so, you, first of all, you never want to get bitten by mosquitoes, period, anywhere right. you go, especially in the tropics. Right. Um, now, secondly, if you are on a nice sweaty hike in Belize and anywhere, basically, and you decide, hey, I'm going to go cool off, jump in the water, and then decide to hang your shirt up or your underwear up or something like that, oh, God, you better underwear. believe... It's going to be some bot fly larva getting laid in there. You do not do that air dry in the hot tropical thi climate because yeah. they get bot fly. And sometimes you will see like infestations of like dozens of bot fly on somebody. Oh my and it's usually God. from them drying out their laundry in a hot tropical environment. And the first time that uh, I think it was Columbia. Yeah, we we're in Columbia. And I remember Johnny Mallory. Mallory knows Johnny really well. They've worked together a bunch. Johnny goes and like, literally Johnny being Johnny goes and like scrubs all his undies in the Amazon river and then comes and hangs them up. And there's this line of like 15 pairs of undies <laughs> on like day nine. And I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> and he's like, dude, I got to wash my Johns. Like they're so gross. And I'm like, you have no idea what's about to be no. crawling around your junk fella. <laughs> like uh, you cannot be doing that. Like you put those away or throw them out right now. Well, so how do the, uh, and, and Mallory chime in, if you know, too, how do, how do the, larvae get into the shorts is that from mosquitoes also or are they so they f oh they fly they're bot flies correct when, correct oh, yeah. so, so do they eventually come out of your skin at, after they turn into a fly if you wouldn't weren't to get it removed i think so like, how uh, the do you know Mary? they must right? so they the, must hatch out yeah the grub falls out to the ground and then it'll it'll pupate and it'll go into a fly it's fucking horrific so, oh, <laughs> so you just have this little thing squirming around in your brain for, for, for six weeks, and then it just comes out, 
and and turns into a fucking fly. Yep. Yeah, you, yeah you, but you got to make sure you film it. That's the only reason why I wanted to keep a minute so I could film it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty awesome, right? I mean, how many YouTube views would you get for that? I mean, that would go viral. Oh, oh dude, sure. yeah. I mean, Coyote Peterson built his whole career on things of that nature. Totally. <laughs> um, so yeah. So where are we? So, Sorry, I was going to say, you almost got into uh, it with a rat lung worm, didn't you? On one of your episodes, you were talking about not licking or eating any of the snails. I wouldn't, say I, almost got in, I wouldn't say I almost got into one because like, it's like anything, right? Like you don't know how many are contaminated, but we, yeah. In, in, so in the, in the Southeast, and we've, told, we've talked about this before as well. They have apple snails, which are an invasive species, as you know, Mallory. And um, the, the apple snails carry rat lungworm. Remember we talked about this? Yeah. And it's like, if you get rat lungworm, it's, you're not a rat and it doesn't know where your lungs are. So you end up with this parasite in your brain that ultimately is incurable and can kill you. Yikes. Um, which is just a lot of fun. But yeah, again, I swear it was it's just Johnny, man. He's trying to kill himself, that kid. <laughs> He's a doofus. But uh, we're, I, I actually think it was Mitch's time. But regardless, we're in Louisiana and like somebody's like picking up these snails and playing with them. I'm like, I wouldn't be playing with those if I were you. <laughs> Uh, from coming from the guy who's like playing with a pit viper or some kind pit of viper. viper's fine, man. There's no <laughs> parasites in that guy. It's those snails that'll get you. Well, like you said, I mean, you're the thing you're most scared of are these parasites and insects, man. hundred percent. That's why 100%. She, she is, uh, she has, uh, less fear than you do to go out. Her whole thing is going and playing with these bot flies. Uh, all of our guests for the last several months have been much braver than me. Yeah. Kings of Pain guys, they're they're just they're just fucking themselves up on a daily basis. Mallory, yeah. we had Rob and Adam from the Kings of Pain on the podcast a few weeks ago. Uh, then we had Coyote nuts. on recently, and I mean that guy's a nut. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's the best, but he's a nut, man. Yeah, like, he's just like I'm gonna let the most venomous bee in the world sting me in the penis, and I'm like, why? <laughs> why are you gonna do that? Don't do that. Now, <laughs> Mallory, have you ever let a uh, poisonous animal sting you in the dick? Come on, Peter. <laughs> you know, I uh, I was tempted at one time, and then I was like, no, somebody else is going to beat me to it first. You and could have had it. your own TV show. Yeah, that's all it takes. I could have gone viral. Yes. Yeah. So Mallory gets back from Belize. She's she's now she's now an accomplished photographer of the jungles and the critters. But still, <laughs> how did you continue to go down? Like, I mean, you really are the the queen of the creepy crawlies nowadays. Like, how did you continue to build that? As a brand, how did you make that like a thing that you wanted to communicate? Like, there's a lot more than like going to Belize with a camera one time. Yeah, I think after just starting to research them and then you start working with scientists that are passionate about them, um, I got to experience um, maggot debridement therapy. It's where you have an open wound that's like festering and antibiotics aren't working. So they actually put maggots on it and the maggots will eat and clean the wound. And then the wound will just heal up and like, it's no big deal. And then also, uh, leech. Um, so uh, leeches. Hold, hold on, Mallory. Hold on. Because my favorite part of like a lot of these podcasts is seeing Peter and Kyle and unfortunately not Patrick's face. We're going to pull up a screen share of what maggot D. Bryman is, which I've personally seen firsthand. It looks awful and it's fantastic. Yeah. So, it's what, so great. What you're seeing here, go to the green one, Kyle. Kyle's looking away. He can't, he can't handle this. So what you're seeing here is a wound. Go down to the bottom right one under the green one. Mm. You're seeing a wound that is festering and rotting and gangrenous. Okay. And in order to cure that, because if a, so if a Kyle, just look up, look up, Kyle. If we're, <laughs> in order for a doctor to clear that and clean that up, they have to go in and remove a whole lot of tissue because right. they don't know where the rot ends and the good tissue really begins other than a Oof. bit of poking around, right? Yeah. But maggots know exactly where the rot ends because they're only eating the rotting flesh. So what you wow. people do for this debridement therapy is they take sterile maggots that were raised in a lab and they put them on these wounds and these maggots will clean up all of the rotting flesh and then drop off because maggots don't eat live healthy flesh. They only eat rotting flesh. Wow. So they drop off right after. Yeah. They'll eat. They'll, That's I mean, nuts. you know, they'll, they'll clean the wound. I mean, I'm sure you have to brush a couple off, but the <laughs> right. point is they clean up all this gangrenous, festering, dying flesh, which obviously continues to spread and grow and become yeah. gangrenous if it's right. not treated. And, uh, and you're left with a clean, healthy wound that you can then, you know, medically treat and recover. Dude, it's nature's neosporin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they just need... Mallory, here's 
here, here's a task for you, Mallory. With it, maggots just need a rebrand. We just need to call them nature's neosporin instead of maggots. And I think you got to <laughs> yeah. be Organic more. neosporin. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Mallory, you were, you were going to get onto the leeches. And yeah, all yeah. I know about leeches is from Stand By Me, the 80s movie, where there's a bunch of leeches down there at Whitey Tidies when they Kyle, go in the swamp. Up, well, Mallory's talking. Pull up. Uh, uh, what would you call it? It's like leech blood draining or something like that. What would you call it? What's the name for it, Mallory? They're FDA medical leeches. So the sure. leeches are FDA medical devices now. Oh, wow. In microsurgery. Yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, but you got to find one that's gross and gnarly, Kyle. That's not going to do or it. Or say like gosh. leeches on sur- post-surgery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. so they, they use it for like post-surgery? Yep, you'll yeah. see. You'll see. All right, tell us about it, Mallory. Tell us about it. Yeah, okay. isn't that great? Okay, so say you actually chop off your finger. A researcher okay. is able to put together the muscle and the tissue and the skin, but what they can't do is reestablish the, oh, wow. the capillaries, the super tiny things. And what happens wow. is when tissue doesn't get blood, it dies. It turns black. Okay. It starts stinking. And so the leech is able to suck the blood through those broken capillaries and reestablish that connection again. So what Dude. you're seeing are like flaps of skin that are about to die and they put the leeches on them. That is one of the most fascinating things I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. I, I thought that that was like a medieval like hospital thing no, that they did. Very legit. Wow. Man, if, so if dogs are a man's best friend, leeches are that super smart lab partner that everybody wants, but nobody wants to hang out with after class. Like they have done so <laughs> much that. for, um, they're the ones that found out how our neurons communicate. So the first neurotransmitters was because of studying a leech. So it's, right. uh, it's pretty amazing. I don't want Mallory to hear this, but I'm going to say it. I hate leeches. Yeah, I, I swear to God, I've nearly become anemic from leeches. I remember we were hiking. Oh my God, I we were hiking in Borneo one time. I, we filmed this, but never made it to air. I should see if I can get the clip. We're hiking to Borneo in Borneo one time, and everybody tucks their socks, their pants into their socks, right? Because it keeps leeches from yeah, going on you. Right. Well, I'm on camera. I can't be the I can't be the pants tucked into your socks guy. No, no pants in socks no, and you've no ne- helmets. You've, you've never seen Indiana Jones with his <laughs> denims p- tucked into his knee highs, right? right? It's not a look. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like a normal person, I've got my pants where pants should be. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we hike. We're hiking like, man, it's gnarly. We're doing like, it's me and Johnny and I think Romanoff. I can't remember anymore. It might have been Mitch. No, it was me, Johnny, and Mitch. We're hiking like five hours a day every day. Cause it's like oh. two and a half hours into the, so- in the spot where we're seated and sitting in this blind. And then two and a half hours back. We did this every day for like five days. Wow. But on the first day... We did the first hike in, which is like, it's you're like between knee deep water and like foot deep mud the whole time. First hike in, didn't notice it for whatever reason, didn't check my ankles. First hike back. And so a full day and I pull, go to like shower or whatever. And I yep. pull my, it's literally, there is like 40 leeches per ankle, like just lining around the top of my sock and going up the leg, like all the way to the kneecap. You should have sold them to a hospital, man. Bro, it was, <laughs> and then we had to pull each one off and they have an anticoagulant in their saliva. So you just bleed and bleed and bleed. Wow. And I mean, I, I lost like a quarter gallon of blood. A just quarter it, it gallon? Didn't, it didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. Huh? It a didn't quarter. hurt. Like it doesn't hurt or anything, but like my legs just bled for hours. It's like kinda four cra- hours it's, It is kind of crazy that they can puncture you and then put that anticoagulant there, but yet you don't really feel don't it at all. Don't even feel it. Nope. Don't feel it at all. Wow. Yeah. So it's nature's, what would leeches be? If, if uh, the maggots are nature's neosporum, what would, uh, what would leeches be, Mallory? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> what is it? Like, why would you want to like bloodlet yourself? Um, nature's, uh, nature's capillary welders. There you go. <laughs> That's very clever. Very clever. Um, Mark, how did night. you remove your leeches? Because you, there's a wrong way and a right way. Uh, as quickly as I could and forcefully. So probably the wrong Definitely way. Definitely the wrong yeah, way. They if were, I know Forrest. Uh, I know that. Uh, so correct. Actually, I want to hear this. Before I, I give wrong information, what's the right way? Right way would be anything that doesn't piss it off. So once you piss a leech off, it's going to regurgitate all that blood, including probably like rat blood or whatever else oh. it was gorging on before you back into your blood system 
So um, you want to use credit card or your fingernail and you want to pop it off. But if you like try to set it on fire or pinch and pull, that thing's going to like regurgitate all that blood back into its host. It literally yep. just goes scorched earth to yes. try and fill you with AIDS and, and black plague. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> I actually think, if I'm not mistaken, we did take... I think I took my knife, which is usually dull as shit, and, like, scraped them all off, um, which probably went 50-50. Probably, like, <laughs> probably got some real pissed off and also got some by surprise. But, yeah, it was it was wild. And God. that's not the first time, and it's not the last time, and it's just... They suck, man, literally and figuratively. <laughs> leeches suck. Literally. Um, but, yeah, so... Anyway, so yeah, Mallory's doing all this stuff. She's communicating all these awesome things. And she's not like, this is what I love. When I go on Instagram, if I go on Instagram right now, and yep. granted, this is my demographic, and I, and I open up my feed, I'm going to get 15 hot girls swimming with sharks. That's what I get. That's what's on my Instagram, right? Because I'm friends with all these girls. They're right. friends of mine. They're people I know. And then you have Mallory, who's sitting here looking wholesome, holding the nastiest, yuckiest thing you can imagine, man. She's got a, she got a hagfish, or she's got a, she's got a maggot in her hand, or whatever. And like, just being normal, you know, and just being like, check this out. And it's yeah. just so cool because it's like, it's not just another cute girl with a nice butt and a bikini next to a shark, you know. It's like right. that's played out. It's done. It's boring. Here's <laughs> Mallory looking like a normal person holding this super gross thing, and people are tuning in to check it out. And I just, I don't know. I think it's so much cooler than what every other sort of animal influencer is doing. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's a bit more kind of. Uh genuine and less like set up stage kind of thing you just go out there and you you know you, it's more relatable it's it sounds like you know you're you're to kids you're bringing these tell tell me uh if you don't mind more about this he he said that you're working with uh like uh, underprivileged children and you're t what are you yeah we never even finished that did we yeah uh, do you, tell me a little bit about that you take them like on adventures or are you still doing I'm that <clears throat> uh, we're starting to in uh, Tennessee. We're trying to bring. I work with Big Brother Big Sister programs, so oh, we're nice. trying to bring them and take them hiking and camping and um, just allowing people to experience something that they may not have been able to before. You know, a lot of a lot of families are kind of hard up on luck and um, may not have the resources or the time mm -hmm. or the availability to take their kids out. Or a lot of parents are just intimidated the outdoors themselves. So right. it's pretty neat to provide. Well, and and it's, I, I love that because, and I'm a victim of this too. Uh, as I get older, you know, I never make the time anymore to go, to go out and connect with nature. Not enough anyways, you know, and I'm having a kid here soon. And I'm actually really looking forward to when he's old enough for me to take him out and show him all this shit that, I used to love, I still love it. I just don't make time for it. Like camping, the hiking, you know, mount, mountain biking out in, in these different terrains and stuff. And, you know, it's something, I think the world would be a better place with what you're doing if more people got out there and remember to kind of connect with nature. I know I always feel better when I do, and I couldn't imagine having grown up where I just never did that. I was outside all the time in the woods playing by myself, like, you know, and, and you kind of, if you it, you kind of lose that as you get older, and it would suck to never have had that. So that's pretty pretty cool. And you said it perfectly. You know, so many people now are it's screen time, so their nature is on the screen. So if that right. nature is shock value, then that's all they're going to yeah. know. So I'm that not, fucking I'm not Coyote that. Peterson. Well, I was going to say I'm not helping that. <laughs> I'm making the screen time, but no, You're not it's, a shock it's, value. But you get kids though. interested. No. That's good. Yeah, uh, it's true, and I'm not. I'm not very big into shock value. Um, you could have stopped after big. Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho. you're a small guy. That's all I'm saying. Very Thanks. meager. Also insulting. <laughs> is this so, so because Patrick isn't here, the, the guy who's now basically the same height as you is the meager guy. I shrunk. That's not okay. my fault. <laughs> That's a disability. Evidently that I have. <laughs> not oh, only do funny. I not get out enough, I shrink as I get older. Yeah, too much hunching at that computer. It's so true. So, so Mallory, what else is on deck with you? We're, we'll, well, I'll, I'm going to come up with a BR here in a minute. Nice. I think I think we have to come up. Yeah, we do. Oh, yeah. I'll explain that to you in a minute. But what else is on deck for you at the moment, Mallory? Where where can people find you? What else is going on in your world? Give us a little give us a little insight. So we got the podcast. We got, um, I'm now an IUCN Save Our Species Storyteller. So if anybody is interested in any conservation work that's being done where 
they take care of the community, the habitat and the animal that they're trying to highlight. And so it's some pretty cool stories about that. I'm in citizen science. So if anybody wants, it may, or might want to be involved in science and stuff like that. Then on the website, there's a bunch of opportunities going and working with sea turtles. Um, everything from, I know probably Molly, your bro masters don't really want to go play with butterflies, but they definitely need You'd help. Right be now. Surprised. Yeah. You would be surprised. <laughs> Right now, I, um, I think animals. the Western monarch population has decreased 99% of its historic population. But wasn't there a big boom over the pandemic? There was. The there was one little shift like a few years ago where the monarchs sort of spiked. Yeah. But it didn't ha- It didn't actually like sustain and no, help it's long-term. like, you know, it's like watching the stock market. It's like it's going down. Right. But you have these little spikes. That's unfortunate. They're beautiful. I beautiful love that insects. you knew that, though. God. Yeah. He knows a lot these days, I but listen. yeah, no, keep going, Mallory. Keep going. Um, that's, I would say that's about it. I'm really needing some help finding someone who knows where I can find wild hagfish. So if any of your uh, listeners, Roasters. yeah, uh, coyote, coyote knows he did a thing with hagfish. Didn't he? Didn't he put his hand in a I hagfish? Thought, I think tank? it was lampreys. Oh, that's Those right. Lampreys. That will yeah, suck yeah, your yeah, blood. Yeah, yeah. I need the right. one that shoot, shoot thread yeah. shit. That's fine. Yeah. We, by the way, we fish them in Santa Barbara. By we, I don't mean me. I have zero interest in these <laughs> disgusting animals. Somebody but, in the uh, world. No, there is a commercial fishery for what we call slime eels. It's a hagfish in Santa Barbara where they put traps down at like 400 feet and pull wow. up these buckets of them. And then they, they ship them off to, I think, Japan, maybe China for toothpaste because they, they use the slime that the hagfish have in it to make toothpaste. What yeah. the fuck? You're brushing your teeth with eel slime, bro. I don't brush my teeth, so... Well, <laughs> I just um, use mouthwash. All right, so here's what we're gonna do, Mallory. You've listened to the pod. You know that you know that uh, you know that we do this thing called the battle royale. Um, but just to explain it, we're well. Let me, first, let me set it up. So what we're gonna do is all three of us are going to create the most disgusting, off-putting, creepy crawly <laughs> that we can using three features. It can be whatever you like, head, body, legs, superpower, whatever you want, because Anna, because insects and creepy crawlies are so, so diverse. And we're right. going to create the perfect, gross, yucky critter okay. that Mallory is going to communicate to the world that they're wonderful. And she doesn't have to do that on the pod, but that's, that's why we're doing this battle royale. Sure. So we're going to okay. go snake draft. I'll go first, so it means it'll go me and then Peter and then you, Mallory. You'll pick again, and we're we'll gonna go leave back. Kyle out. Kyle's out. Kyle's out. Okay. Kyle's got to pull up pictures of these things. It's right. weird. Okay. Animals. Okay. I just feel like he's got a lot to do. He does. He's yeah. working hard over <laughs> there. So many things. <laughs> um, so yeah. So we'll do snake draft. This is the creepy crawly battle royale. Okay. All right. All right. I'm up first. Um, you know what? I'm gonna. And by the way, you cannot pick one twice. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Why did you, what? So if I say spider, you can't be a spider. Right, of course. That's right. the point of a snake draft. Come yeah, on. but I'm just explaining to Mallory. Guy. No, yeah. come on. All right, so I think that one of the things that people just can't stand the thought of... Is it your shirt being lifted up there and showing your belly? Rude. Sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry I wear fitted shirts, Peter. <laughs> um, uh, I, think that w- I think that one of the things... <laughs> that people can't stand when it comes to creepy crawlies is all the legs. So I'm going to take the legs of a millipede for the start. (laughs) So just imagine all these little undulating legs going over you with my animals. That's my first pick. Uh, I better write these down. Legs of a millipede for Forrest. Okay. Mallory, you want to, you want to go? I go next. Okay. We'll go in a circle. Or Uh, stole mine. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good one. I am going to go with the. You're right about the legs. Did you screenshot on these, pal? Let's let's see them as we go. But I'm gonna go. All right, so I'm gonna go head first. And listen, it's it's pretty it's pretty square, but it's notoriously creepy. People hate them. Uh, I'm going with the face and head of a rat. Beady little eyes. Gross. Okay. Nice rat. They bite you. They, head they of a rat. really can. Lay a nice bite on you and That's give gross. spread disease. It's gross. Look at head those beady eyes, man. Oh, yep. yuck. Okay. Yep. Head of a rat. Head of a rat. I mean, those are adorable rats, to be honest. But I, I'm I talking get where you're a going. Street, street rat, rat, motherfucker. Street, sewer rat. Yeah. Yeah. Head of a sewer <laughs> rat. Okay. Good. All right, Mallory, you're up for two because we're going snake draft. So you pick uh, head, body, legs, abilities, whatever you like. Two really gross things for your battle royale. Okay, I'll do the head of a lamprey. 
Wow. Give us a, give us a why. Give us a why. Um, they're the first things I had <laughs> nightmares about. Uh, understandable. <laughs> it looks like an alien from a horror movie. Doesn't nice. it? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. I'll do that. And then the tongue of the parasitic wrasse. It's a tongue-eating rat. Oh, God. Tongue-eating rats. Ra- um, W-R-A-S-S. No, rats. It's a fish. Oh, W-R-A-S-S. R-A-S-S. Yep. Even worse. Sorry. Wait, sorry. <laughs> he- wait, we said head of a lamprey and what of a rat? The, the tongue. The tongue. Okay, type in the tongue, please. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, that yeah. thing. The, uh, the yeah. big... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what is it called? Uh, it's not an isopod. The big tongue-eating isopod. Dude. Yeah. Yes. Okay, head of a lamprey, tongue God. of an isopod. Yeah, right. so there's one to... big head, and then the rash, and then do I do any of the feet, too? Uh, we'll come back to you. So we're going snake drive. So we'll go back to Peter. And at this point, you got, like, the head and tongues. So you're going to have to pick, like, a body for the whole thing to live on. Okay. Um, that's okay. nice. All right, Peter, you're up. Okay. So I have the disgusting beady-eyed street rat as a head. And as the, uh, as the body, I'm going to go with a, <laughs> a uh, giant squid. Okay. Ooh. Right? So you're going big, big gross animal. Yeah. It's, okay. Oh, of course. I mean, dude, you just imagine. Uh, because uh, So the other thing is the, the rest of the parts, they size to the body. So however big your body is, your head and your side. tongue is going to be that big to match it ratio wise. So I'm going to have this giant squid tentacles, disgusting <laughs> fucking tentacles hanging out. And I just learned uh, the other day that the, they have a beak. Forrest taught me this inside of their tentacles and then their main beak on the head. But the tentacles have little beaks that latch into you like mouths on a a bird beak. So that's disgusting. Yep. And then it's going to have a, a, a street rat's beady-eyed head on it. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. So I'm up for two. You're up for two. Okay, so I got the legs of a millipede. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put this gross, these gross set of legs on the body of a slime eel. We've talked about them a lot. <laughs> uh. um, I'm going to go hagfish here. Body of a hagfish. And the reason being, I want that sliming ability. Because imagine uh, yeah. that thing... It's already got the head of a, a legs of a millipede on it. Yep. Now it crawls on you and just drops this goop all over you. Look yes. at there's the car picture we're talking about. It's a good ca- oh yeah, that car fucking bananas. You ever seen this, Mallory? This, this yeah, infamous picture? it's insane. I would love That's to crazy. just go swimming in that. <laughs> oh, you are a wild lady. Um, all That'd right. go viral. That would go viral. <laughs> You'd be real stuck to the pavement. <laughs> um, so. Finally, to round out my most disgusting creature, on the body of a hagfish with the legs of a millipede, I have the face of a blobfish. Oh, oh man. But a dead blobfish. The famous fi- well, blobfish. Well, the, the blobfish. That one. Yes. That one. Yes. That's on the face right there. One minute. I'll be right back. Where are you? Oh, my. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Peter. It's his turn, so of course he has to go get something. He's running to Google right now. He's like, God damn it. Gross animals. Gross animals. That's what he's Googling <laughs> right now. Well, that's a pretty gross. That's good because I need more time to think. That's fine. Yeah, Peter. Now I have to stall for Peter. We got dead air. I just, I just gotta do a plug. Yeah, do a plug for this, for five, for this stuff. Since we're talking about it, this is. I just gotta do a plug since we're talking <laughs> about it. This is our shirt right here, with uh, my spirit animal, the infamous blobfish. Right oh, here. That's Peter's spirit so animal. Much. Yep. That's <laughs> Peter's spirit animal. <laughs> so go to that. Go to uh, go to. Uh, I think it's like shop.wildtimes.com or wildtimespodcast.com and check it out. Yep. Good. Get plug. yourself a blobfish Good spirit plug. animal shirt. We haven't talked about that in a while. <laughs> I know. That's nice. All right. I've got a pretty gross critter, Peter. How are you going to round out okay. your body squid? Easy. Body of a giant squid, head of a rat. Listen, you made a great point. Uh, things getting slime. That's disgusting. But it is. I want to. I want to tantalize a different s- sense. I'm going to have the body, including the gland that releases the scent. You already uh, have the body. Of the, what do I? No, I have the tentacles. 
Oh, just tentacles. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, gotcha. And, Sorry. And I'm going to have the body of a skunk with the ability to spray <laughs> disgusting <laughs> skunk scent. Uh, so it's going to be this slimy creature. I like how you didn't use a single creepy crawly in our creepy crawly battle royale. I don't, I don't, I speak English. I don't know what a creepy crawl one you is. Do. You do. It's you slimy. Crawl. I'll take it. All right. Thank you. Very Thank good. you, Mallory. Very good. Okay. All right, Mallory, round us out. You got the head of a lamprey with an isopod tongue in the middle. That's revolting. You probably don't <laughs> even need to do a third thing. What What are you putting this on? What What are we looking at? Is this a tarantula? Like, what, what are we looking at here? I think tarantula. Something super hairy that can climb on walls. Oh, I didn't I didn't mean to, to steal your thing. That Come was, on. I didn't know I like it. Say tarantula. I think that or a maggot. But I think tarantulas have better abilities than a maggot. Nice. Definitely. So look at that. That thing. Imagine that. Oh, to be honest, that with a lamprey head. Dude. And then it just sticks out its critter tongue like it's little like. Uh, woo. Dude, I know I've been talking about woo. this on, on podcast recently, but I just watched uh, Jackass Forever, the new Jackass. <laughs> they put this. they they get this uh, one of the guys who's on there. They get his dad, who's like an ex gangster convict to come on. And then uh, with one of the original guys, they put this big glass enclosure on their heads with fabric here so that it can't get out. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a big tube in the middle. Okay. And the other guy has the same helmet on. And they drop a fucking tarantula in there. And they're bl just blowing back and forth. Oh, trying to blow the tarantula. And the, the, the dude, the, the gangster dude is fucking terrified. I'm he's not sure. like a jackass guy. Right. And he's like, motherfucker. Like, they got him tied <laughs> down and shit. It is the funniest <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life. Very, man. very good animal ethics in that film, by the way. <laughs> they I'm being sarcastic. I I, they, they definitely made sure to uh, include bits of them saying don't harm the animal don't hurt the yeah, animal like I screaming bet. it for real all right well let's recap here uh dave sunshine he's our graphic artist for the podcast he's gonna have a blast with this one <laughs> so brosters weigh in let us know who made the grossest creepy crawly is it forest's body of a hagfish with the legs of a millipede and the head of a blobfish is it peter's non-creepy crawly creepy crawly with the the skunk's body the tentacles of a giant squid and the head of a rat? Yes. It is? It is. Of okay. course it is. Or, I think I already know the winner, to be honest. I don't even think we came close. Is it Mallory's tarantula that has the head of a lamprey with an isopod tongue sticking out? That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that is so gross. Brosters, weigh in. Let I'd us know. I'd make out with that animal. Yeah. I bet it's great at kissing. You'd make out with it? It's a great kisser. I can it tell would, already. It would, first of all, it would rip your tongue off, and then it would replace your tongue with a bug. So just think <laughs> about that. Um, it's always what I've wanted. Uh, Mallory, let, let our listeners know where they can find you. What's, what are, what are your, what are, what's your space? Uh, MissMalloryAdventures.com. And uh, Instagram, where I'm at mainly, is uh, Miss MS period Mallory Adventures. Nice. Love that. So Love she's it. She's on IG. She's all over the place. She's got YouTube. She's got a podcast. It's great. Um, Peter, do the thing. Uh, yeah, to find our bullshit, uh, Wild Times Pod on all social medias, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, hit up the website, thewildtimespodcast.com forward slash info for all of the links in one beautiful spot. And, uh, you know, check out the shop. Check out this, uh, yeah, buy this the, blobfish buy the merch. Animal thing. We got this shit. We never it, talk once, about it. Dude, once, da once Dave like mocks up uh, Mallory's critter, yeah. he's probably going to have to make another shirt because that's like really gross. Dude, I, I, I'm all about it. We should put all the fucking Battle Royale an animals on uh, That's going to be a large merch. shop. That is going to be a very large shop. Hey, fuck it. Why not? Yeah, more, I like more, that. More money to add to our zero. Uh, <laughs> Mallory, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great. You're a wonderful guest. Thank you for... Continuing to break down the stigma, you know, while also making really gross things and critters on our battle royale. And, uh, brosters, good night. Good night. Good night, Mallory. Good night, guys. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Gross. It's like a gross. We're pretending that the music's playing. I know. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, yeah, we're talking. Yeah.